In this video, we're going to go through some of the major passive effects that most players are going to want to get at some point along their journey. You can treat this video as a goals tick list, I suppose, to make sure you have everything on here to benefit your character. So, with that being said, there's probably going to be some stuff that has been missed, and if you can think of any, leave them in the comments down below. And obviously, I can't cover every single passive effect in RuneScape because there would be a huge list. So, here are the major ones. Let's go. So while this list is mostly in no particular order, I'm going to start off with the items that you can get that of course will provide passive effects to yourself. Number one is going to be the Max K. Now this is obviously a pretty big grind for most players, but once you do reach it, it is important to know about because you can get yourself three of the other skill cape perks on this cape and have them all active at the same time. Now you can boost this to four passive cape effects by using the Anachronia cape stand as well. This will allow you to have a cape on there too, which will give you four perks pretty much active at all times. If you wasn't aware, each skill cape does have its own perk once you actually achieve it. And there is also some variants of the 120 skill capes that will give benefits as well for the respective skills that go up to 120. As of right now, I am using the HP, Invention and Defense skill capes because these give me benefits that just work for my character and the things that I do. For example, the Defense skill cape will give me a sign of life. That being said, there's so many different options that the customization will probably be different for many different people depending on what is useful for yourself so i will link in the description the list for all of the different skill cape perks and then you can kind of customize this around to see what fits for you best it's also worth mentioning that some capes in the game that you may want to wear over the max cape for example the capes that you will get from completing zook they will actually have the max cape perk effects on them as well next up we're going to talk about the enriched pontifex shadow ring the enriched Pontifex Shadow Ring is going to give you a ton of benefits through the Elder God Wars encounters. For example, Karapak, Arglaisor, uh, Zuck, all of those people, you know, the people that, that you kill in the Elder God Wars. But you can get the enriched version after completing Extinction, and it's going to give you a lot of other bonuses. You're going to get extra unique drop chances for killing the bosses by 2%, and some buffs to many other things as well. However, having the Font Effect Shadow Ring anyway and having it upgraded means that all of its effects become a passive as well. So you can have this in your bank, and it will still give all of the effects while it is just chilling in there. It'll change the way boss encounters affect you as well. For example, Karapak won't be able to stun you when he does the dive. Again, I'll link everything in the description. So if you wanna have a further read on this or see how you actually obtain it, then there'll be a link down there for you to check out. Another effect you can get for completing the same quest extinction is the passive Ring of Vigor, something that most people doing PVM are definitely gonna to wanna to get. The Ring of Vigor you can buy from the Dungeoneering store and it's gonna give you a refund on adrenaline whenever you cast specific abilities such as ultimates or weapon specialists attacks that being said when you have it as a passive you no longer have to equip this you just don't even have to carry it in your anywhere it's just gone and the effect is always active the difference in adrenaline that you get from this is absolutely huge and you will definitely notice it and it is definitely something that most people who are looking at pvm are going to want to get at some point Moving on to more engineering rewards you can actually get a gold accumulator from here and what it's going to do is it will collect coins for you from the tool belt now you'll have to buy the actual ability to use it on your tool belt from a slayer master but once you can do this it will start collecting any coin drops that go to the floor for you and add it to your coin pouch immediately the only downside to this is that it takes 10 percent of the actual coins and, and uses that to justify doing it for you but if you use this in situations like slayer where you're afking or any boss that you're afking as well that you wouldn't normally pick up the coins this can absolutely make a good difference and I mean, it, it's just a convenience item, something that I'm sure many people would enjoy having. Next up is the Bone Crusher. The Bone Crusher is another item from the engineering that can be popped onto your tool belt once you've had a Slayer Master show you how to do it. However, the Bone Crusher has a couple of uses. One, it is going to just com immediately convert any bones that drop to the ground into prayer XP. So you don't have to pick them up. It'll just immediately get converted over to prayer experience. Because of this effect, you can combine it with a demon horn necklace to actually provide yourself with a higher restore rate of prayer points. Because every time it buries a bone or the, like burns a bone or whatever it does, it is going to then provide you with the XP, which will then convert into prayer points as well if you have the necklace active. That's pretty useful. And then further down the line, you can use chimes to upgrade this into the upgraded bone crusher. The upgraded bone crusher will no longer just destroy them immediately. What it will do is it will give you the option to 
teleport those bones directly to your inventory. So say you kill a dragon, the bone will drop to the floor, but instead of just being on the floor, it will immediately go to your inventory. This way you can note them up, or you can use other passives, which we'll talk about at some point in the video, which will automatically note it for you. Meaning things like killing frost dragons becomes a hell of a lot easier and pretty good money. Next up is one that I know many of you guys aren't going to know about. I've mentioned it a few times in a past video, of course, because it's something that I know that many people don't know about, but I'm sure you still going to be a few of you that don't. Anyway, it is the Spirit Cape. The Spirit Cape is pretty useful because it will give you a passive effect once you buy it from the Dungeoneering Reward Shop, of reducing your familiar's special move costs. Basically, whenever your Ripper Demon uses a special move or a special attack, or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's going to be 20% less in terms of the, the cost for prayer points. This means it can get more special attacks out, increasing DPS output, or whatever the, the actual special move effect is going to be. And while this, yes, is a cape, it doesn't have to be equipped for this effect to actually be active. It can just either sit in your bank, or I do believe you can also destroy it once you've bought it and still benefit from the effect. So if you do have some dungeoneering tokens laying around and you're not sure what to spend it on, if you don't have this, it is definitely worth grabbing. Our last dungeoneering reward shot reward for right now is going to be the Charming Imp. This is something that most people leveling up are going to want to get, especially if you're going to be focusing on leveling up summoning at some point, because it's just going to be a hell of a convenience item. Again, this is bought from the dungeoneering reward shop. However, what it's going to do is is whenever you kill a monster that drops charms, Charming Imp has the two options of either transferring those directly to your inventory, in which they stack, of course, or you can set it to convert drop charms into a small amount of XP. I wouldn't really recommend doing this. I would always recommend just having the charms put into your inventory because that way it's definitely better value for time. But for example, if you're AFKing things like Water Fiends to get red charms, having this just means that any charms that they drop will go directly into your inventory. And yes, I know they're Crimson Charms, not red charms, but it is what it is. It's been a while since I've actually actively picked up any charms. Don't forget to pair this with a Charming Potion whenever you do this though, because Charming Potions are cheap on the Grand Exchange and they're just going to increase the amount of charms that the monsters drop. So it saves you a lot of time. It's also worth mentioning that again this can be added to your tool belt from a slayer master when you do get to that point next up we have the spring cleaner you can make this through invention and it's pretty damn useful for anyone who likes to afk or do a lot of slayer like for slayer this thing is it is holy hell good what it's going to do is you will charge it with springs or with the tight springs that you'll get from treasure hunter and stuff and every time that you get like a salvage drop it will be able to high out this or disassemble it depending on how you set it up for anyone who doesn't know it is actually more efficient to high out salvage drops because they alk for more than they will sell on the grand exchange so you can either put them in like an auto alker in the invention guild or if you're using spring cleaner when you kill whatever it is that you're killing any salvage that you do get can be high out immediately this also saves inventory space when doing slayer things because you may not want to pick all of them up in the first place due to actually having space so this doesn't even need that it's like the bone crusher the second the thing gets dropped to the floor it gets out and it immediately sends the coins into your coin pouch and of course this can also disassemble salvage to give you invention materials but it just depends on what you want to use it for next up we have the capes that you do actually get from defeating zook zook is going to give you the best in slot cape currently in the game right now and likely probably for a long time in the future. That being said, the capes that suck all have different passive effects that change your combat in massive ways for pretty much all combat styles. Honestly, not having these makes a huge difference and they are something that everybody wants to throw on their list of things to actually achieve. The Zook cape, for example, for necromancy, which is probably the style that most people are using right now, it will increase the amount of times that your death skulls will bounce but it will also reduce the adrenaline that it costs from 100% down to 60%, which is crazy good and makes it absolutely 100 times more worth using. Of course, completing Zuck is not one of the easiest things in the game to do, but it is absolutely one of the goals that you should definitely set on your to-do list. Next up is the Infernal Puzzle Box. This gives a long list of bonuses. I'll put them on screen for you to see, uh, but some of them include things like adrenaline never draining outside of combat and also you're going to increase the damage that you deal to monsters in the wilderness and reduce the damage that they deal to you another big benefit to this is when you're in the infernus in zamorak you'll also take reduced damage as well so having this again can go on your tool belt when you've completed this specific quest is definitely something you want to work towards having just having this overall gives way too many bonuses to not be something that most people want to actually achieve you can find it initially in the 
the very first room on the right hand side as you enter the Zamorakian Undercity. But other than that, you'll have to do certain things to unlock all the different effects and then you can apply it to your tool belt eventually. Okay, so that's all of the items that we're going to cover in this one. The next things are going to be like content unlocks or different passive unlocks that you get from around the game or quests and all that sort of stuff. The first one we're going to talk about is the Curse of the Blackstone Quest. The Curse of the Blackstone Quest is going to give you 10% damage reduction in all three of the first Elite Dungeons, so ED 1, 2, and 3. It's also going to allow you to upgrade the loot chest that you have in those dungeons into a bank and also give you the effect of the 20% chance of doubling your loot on bosses so you don't have to toggle it off anymore you can just leave it on the entire time and it's also going to act as a bank for you you'll have to buy the elite chest upgrade from the dungeoning reward shop however you also need to have completed the curse of the blackstone quest to be able to do so as for elite dungeon 4 to have the damage reduction here you'll have to complete twilight of the gods this quest will give you the 10 percent damage reduction in ed4 and for zamorak as well Next up, we have the good old Fort for in 3. Something I need to work on myself a lot, but it's absolutely worth it probably for many people. Fort for in 3 and all of the buildings in here will offer different effects and different uses when you upgrade them to tier 3. Once you get to tier 3, some of them provide passive effects that are useful in many situations for different players and depending on your playstyle. But I will again, I will link the um, whole Fort for in 3 thing down in the description. So if you want to see what each building will give effects wise, then you can absolutely check that out. Otherwise, just build them all to tier 3 and know that you are living comfortably having them all active. It's probably also worth mentioning though that Fort for in 3 offers many other bonuses as well, such as AFK, like overload making and all of that sort of good stuff. There's, there's many different things, so check out all those effects as well. Another big one that a lot of people want eventually is going to be the Reaper Crew. This is also one that many people don't seem to know about unless they're already sort of high level PVMers. And that is because if you kill every single boss just once each time, you're going to get yourself a ton of bonuses such as plus two prayer bonus, plus 20 armor, plus 200 life points, plus 12 melee damage, range damage, magic damage, and necromancy damage as well. This is all passive. There's nothing else you need to do. And this becomes active, like I said, once you've killed every single boss just once. Next is the Archaeology Relic Power Bonuses. The Archaeology Relics are something that you can unlock as you level up through Archaeology, through the skill line. However, there's a ton of different effects, and I couldn't really go through all of them because they're all kind of valid as well. A lot of them are useful in many different situations. They offer skilling bonuses and PVM bonuses. I believe they probably also offer, like, other bonuses for many different things around the game too so it is definitely worth checking these out again i'll link all of this in the description so you can have a look and also figure out how to get all of the ones that you actually want to be using some of them are super high level so obviously there'll be some sort of long-term goals in there as well which is probably a good thing it's always good to have long-term goals that being said another thing you can do with the arc rally powers is if you complete the mysterious city mystery which is an archaeology mystery called mysterious city you can actually get yourself an extra 150 energy for the monolith as well which then means you can obviously just keep slotting more stuff in there you can have up to three relics active at once and there's definitely some in there that are absolutely game changing next up we're going to have a talk about the anachronia totems now anachronia totems can you can have up to three of these active and what they are is you will collect different pieces of the totems from around anachronia and they provide many different effects for example you can get aura cooldown reduction or you can have something that makes you skip the kill count to get into god was engine one there's many more as well and i will link them all in the description and in that same link if you click into them you'll be able to see where to get all the different pieces for it as well to keep these effects active you will have to keep restoring the totems but it's a weekly thing that you have to do so it's not like it's the end of the world it's actually pretty okay but check out the list and see if there's any benefits in there that you want to use and then you can grab those totems and have it every single week and then finally for this video we will have the player owned farm totems so another totem here but a slightly different now what the totems in player on farms do is you can get different animals in specific pens and then if you put a totem on that pen you'll get some effects that match it again i will link in the description all of the different effects of the totems that you can get and it will tell you which which like animals you need to put in the actual farm and then the effect that you're going to get with it as a quick example though if you get some spiders in one of the pens and you put in 
a totem with that you can get yourself an increase in damage against spiders this works at araxor as well and araxia too so you can get a slight dps increase there as well another thing that i use that is pretty useful is the effect that you get from the malatops so if you put malatops in one and you use the totem for that you can increase the duration of your barricade which is super useful in a lot of pvm situations as well so check out all the effects have a little scroll through see what suit you and if there's anything that's going to benefit you and then you can grab those and get them sorted out too and there you go i think that's most of the major things there may be some that i'm forgetting that you guys are like and you forgot this one and you forgot this one but that should be most of the passive effects that most players are going to want to get and hopefully you found this video useful if you did then make sure to leave the video a like share it with your friends and all that sort of stuff leave a comment down below for anything that you didn't even know existed maybe and other than that i'll catch you all in the next one see you later guys bye